What's up, not just developers? Welcome back to a new live stream. It's Friday, and actually today I was not planning to go live because I'm preparing something big for you for the next week. But then I actually saw a video on TikTok with these games, with a ping pong game that works with the uh, dynamic island of the iOS 16, iOS uh, for the iPhone 14, and I was thinking like, damn, can I build it in React Native? Is it even possible? So uh, two hours ago, the plan was not to go live. And today, now, uh, two hours later, I decided to, uh, to go live and to build this ping pong game with a dynamic island in React Native. Actually, I'm gonna try to build it because I'm not sure if it's gonna be possible and or if I'm gonna be able to do it because even though I worked with game development uh, a couple of years ago, it was a long time ago and I forgot almost everything. So when it comes to this, building this kind of a physics based games, React Native, I don't think is the best tool to do that, but it's a fun challenge to see how we can use React Native Reanimated, which is an animation library and using it, build these physic games. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be really uh, fun uh, to do it. Uh, I really hope that we have some people with uh, game development experience here in the live chat that, is go that are gonna be able to, uh, to help me when I, when I get stuck. But yeah, like, uh, actually, I, let's, let's get started by initializing an empty project and then we can, um, we can talk. Hello everyone from the live chat. Where are you joining us today from? So to generate it, let me go into my project folder, YouTube, and let's initialize it with npx create expo application. And let's do ping and pong. Actually, this is the first game, like first game based on physics that I'm gonna build in React Native. Um, so it's, it's something interesting, something new for me as well. Hello, Giga. Okay, let's wait a couple of seconds until uh, Expo initializes our application. And then we will be able to, to get started. For that, I'm gonna right away prepare my next task and let's do it like this. And let's search for reanimated expo. And expo has a documentation how to install and set up React Native reanimated in an expo managed application. All right, so uh, as we can see, the application has been created and I'm gonna open it in um, Visual Studio Code using the code uh, shortcut. If you don't have this one, just open your Visual Studio Code or any other um, editor of your choice. And when here, we can go ahead and open a terminal inside the Visual Studio Code. You can do that from the top terminal, new terminal. And here I want to actually start the application. No, actually before starting the application, I'm gonna go ahead and right away, um, where is it? Install uh, reanimated. So let's go ahead and grab this command npx expo install react native reanimated. And I'm gonna come in the Visual Studio. Let's paste it here, press enter. And that will install the React Native Reanimated library that is compatible with our Expo version. And the last step that we need to do in order to set up Reanimated is to add this uh, plugin called React uh, Native Reanimated plugin. So let's copy these plugins from here, this whole line. Let's go back in our application and in the, uh, our files, we should see babel.config. So after the presets, let's go ahead and paste our plugins for the reanimated plugin. Now we are ready to start our application. So let's do npm start. If it's the first time, just do npm start. Otherwise you need to start with clearing the cache by doing dash 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 clear. 
and uh, once our development server started, we will see this menu. So from here, we can either scan this QR code from our uh, physical device if you have Expo Go installed, or we can press A to run on Android emulator uh, or I to run on iOS simulator. So I'm gonna open it in, in an iOS simulator. Let's see how it works here. Let me see if it will actually open the, the latest simulator for the uh, iPhone 14. Yes, it opens on iPhone 14 Pro Max. Good. How can you style your terminal prompt? That's a good question. This is actually, uh, I did that this week because I, as you can, I was already saying that I'm, I'm gonna upgrade my PC. So the previous week I did that and I had to set up everything. And actually, uh, most probably I'm gonna try to make a tutorial on how to do that, how to create like your prompt, as you can see here for myself. If you're interested in seeing a tutorial for how to set up this, let me know. And by the way, it's, uh, I'm gonna focus only for Mac OS because so uh, where is my terminal? Here, opening. So simulator, let's wait until it will actually open. Come on. Uh, Gal is saying, love what you're doing. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. I'm excited. I'm excited to be able to share this with you guys. And the, um, the story how it happened today, um, I was not planning to do any live streams because I am preparing something that is gonna come in the, ne in the following weeks. I'm gonna prepare something uh, quite huge for our community, which uh, you definitely are gonna be interested in. So make sure to stay tuned. Next week, I'm gonna come with more details what we're gonna do. But yeah, like that thing involves a lot of planning, a lot of uh, preparation. So I decided not to go live this week, this week just to have a time to prepare for that. But today I was like feeling quite bad because I was not gonna go live. And then I saw this uh, tutorial and I said like, no, I will go, like let, let, me, let me do it. So now I feel better. I feel better because I, I can be here, uh, build exciting applications with you together. And if my simulator will run, that's gonna be even better. So this might take a moment. Come on, you can do it. Should I close it or have patience and wait? Hi, your tutorials are really helpful, thank you. Thank you very much, I really appreciate that. Waiting for the next WhatsApp tutorial. We're gonna continue the WhatsApp, uh, but that's gonna happen in December. So for November, we have like some other big plans, which you're gonna be excited about when, when we announce it. Now I'm gonna actually close it. I don't know what's happening there. Let's do I again. And if it's not gonna work like this, I'm gonna manually open <coughs> an emulator. No, uh, yeah, the second time worked much faster. So let's have a look at what we see in the application, in the brand new Expo application here. Come on. And uh, yeah, like this, this build is also influenced by the fact that uh, I upgraded the, um, the PC and now when installing like the Xcode, I installed the, the latest version. So now I have like access to iOS 16 and iPhone 14 uh, emulators. And they have like this notch. And I know that a lot of people wanted to see some animations with this notch, but uh, as I don't have a physical device, I was not able to do it so far. But now, if you're gonna be interested, we can we can play around with this one.
Today we're gonna do like the ping pong game. The, um, I think this is a game that is actually pretty popular nowadays. It's called Hit the, Hit the Island, uh, but it's super simple to build it yourself. So um, it's gonna be a fun challenge for you to, to follow along and build your game in React Native. So what we see here is our application running and the entry point of our application is the app.js file. So here is where everything starts. And I, right away, I hate that my VS code complains something about React, it refers to him. What's going, why VS code does that? I'm gonna probably, uh, in order not to have to investigate it at the moment. Settings. Uh, no, what I wanted to do is to disable JavaScript checks, just not to see those. Debug JavaScript is disabled actually. Okay, if anyone knows, uh, if anyone knows how to easier, easily fix this uh, issue with VS Code, let me know. But uh, what we can do here is uh, we can start by removing, of course, this text. We will not need it anymore. If we save, it disappears right away. But what we're gonna do, uh, what we're gonna need instead of a text is a simple view that is gonna be our ball. The ball that will move on the screen um, in ping pong, basically. It's pretty self-explanatory. So let's go ahead and attach a styles ball and let's define the styles for our ball. Well, I'm gonna start with a background color, uh, background color black and a width of probably 25 pixels and if I want to make it a uh, perfect square, not square, but circle. So I'm gonna give an aspect ratio of one instead of specifying height uh, 25, I specify aspect ratio one and that will uh, calculate the height based on the width. So now we see the um, uh, perfect square. And if I'm gonna do border radius, um, at least half of our width, then we're gonna have like this perfect circle in the middle of the screen. Uh, I see some issues also with the current resolution. What? Why my current resolution is so low? Yeah, I'm gonna have to... Uh, give me just one second to see if I will be able to do something about the resolution. Um, midstream. Stream. Hmm. That's what you get. Output. Yeah, I cannot do, I cannot change it right now. Okay, that's something to know for the next stream. Um, someone is saying control shift P TypeScript restart TS server control shift P command shift P uh, and restart TS server. Fortunately it didn't work, but it's not TS as you can see. <laughs> Vadim for president, you're awesome. Great content. Thank you very much, Argelio. Okay, never mind. I'm not gonna pay attention to them, even though if you know how to fix them, let me know uh, because they are quite annoying. Um, so now that we have our ball here, what do we want to do with this ball? Well, we want to move. First of all, let's try to move a ball around the screen. To move a ball, uh, I'm gonna start by defining, uh, by specifying the um, uh, position absolute to this ball in order to be able to easier move it based on um, two coordinates. The left coordinate, which can go from zero all the way up until the screen width that is a dynamic value 
and we're gonna take it in a moment. And also based on the top position, which as well I can go from zero, which is gonna be in the top, and all the way to the screen height. So uh, these two positions, I'm not gonna set them statically in the, um, in the styles because we will, we will have to uh, play dynamically with these positions in order to move a ball around the screen. So as you can imagine, this is gonna be our uh, animation. Um, yeah, like using animations, we're gonna drive the position of our ball. So first of all, uh, let's import animated import animated from React Native or animated. And the first step was gonna be to transform this view to an animated, animated dot view. Whenever we want to animate some uh, components, they should be animated components, either animated view, animated text, or something else. Now, what we can do with an animated view is to provide an animated style. Uh, to define the animated style, we're gonna use a hook that we will import from React Native Reanimated called use animated style. Use animated style here. And in the body of our application, in the body of our functional component, let's go ahead and define these styles. So ball styles, ball animated styles equal use animated style. And here inside the uh, hook, what we should do is we should provide a function that returns, uh, that returns some style object. Style object similar to how we are doing it in the style sheet. So the animated style properties that we want to, uh, uh, to animate are going to be the top position if and let's say 100 and the left position 100. Let me do it like this. Now that we have these animated styles, which are at this moment also static, but uh, we're gonna um, fix this in a moment. Let's go ahead and give this animated style to our view that represents the ball on the screen. For that, we're gonna have to add our static style in an array and as the second parameter for this array, we're gonna give them um, ball animated styles. So in React Native, if you provide an array of styles, React Native will merge them together and will apply it as a single object to, to the view. So if I save right now and refresh the application, because uh, changes to our animation values will only work by hard refreshing, by pressing RR two times or in the terminal, simply pressing R. Um, so yeah, as, as you can see, we can move a ball by moving these values here. Okay, now let's think about how we're gonna uh, drive this animation and how we're gonna keep them, what data basically do we need to know about the ball in order to move it on the screen? Well, the first, the first uh, data that we need to know is, what is the position that I want to go to in the next like couple of milliseconds? Basically the target position. So uh, for that, we're gonna use a shared value, uh, which we can define using the hook use shared value from React Native Reanimated. And this value uh, const target position equal use shared value. And this value will allow us to um, drive the animations. Uh, and every time our target position will change, um, it will also update the animated styles that depend on this target position. So let's go ahead and first define the initial value. So for the initial value, I want to provide an object with two properties, the X value of, I don't know, 50 and Y value of 50. Now um, we can uh, use this target position in our animated styles by specifying that the top should be target position dot value dot our Y uh, property. And for the left, that's gonna be target position dot value dot X. Okay, we see it here. Uh, and if we will move it from, uh, from here, it's not gonna move because as I said, like, 
it needs a hard refresh to uh, to move because this is the initial values, how we initialize the, the target position. Well, what we actually want to do is we don't we want to change this target position at like specific intervals, like every, let's say every second, we want to set a new target position and make the ball move to that target position throughout the next like period of time. Uh, to do that, uh, we can use timing animations uh, in order to change our shared value. But when we're gonna start like this loop of always updating the, um, the target position and all the rest of the physics, we're gonna do that when the component, when our application mounts, and to do logic when the component mounts, I'm gonna define our, a use effect, a use effect with the dependency uh, array empty. And if we provide an empty dependency array to the use effect, this function uh, will be called when the component mounts. Component mounted. And I'm gonna do warn. So if I do like this, we see component mounted uh, being called only once when the component actually mounts. So what we want to do here is to start our loop, uh, our functions that will update like all our physics. We will do that every couple of seconds or every couple of milliseconds. So to run the same function over and over again, we can use um, a function from JavaScript called set interval. In the set interval, we need to provide a callback. So for the callback, let me actually define it outside. Let me say, um, I'm trying to remember the days when I was doing game development with Unity. There was a function that was called like at every frame. And I think that the function was called update. Mm. Yeah, let's, let's do an update even though I don't, it's quite generic, but yeah, update. So console log updating physics. So we're gonna call this update function using the set interval, and we need to specify how often do we want to, uh, to call this function. Milliseconds. Uh, after how many milliseconds, how, how many milliseconds should be the interval between calling this function? So for example, if I do 500, that's half a second. And if I'm gonna refresh, we should see updating physics every half a second being called. Okay, that's already good. Um, so what we can do here in the update just to see something working, we can go ahead and I don't know, say target position uh, dot value. Let's change the value of a target position to a new value of X and Y is equal to this where x, let's say, is gonna be that current target position dot value dot x plus 10, uh, and the y is gonna be the current target position dot value dot y plus 10. So if we're gonna do that, we should see the, um, yeah, let me initialize it at the top of the screen. We should see that already something is happening. Our ball is moving on the screen very weirdly, but it is moving. Uh, in order to make the animation a bit smoother, not to jump from one point to another, we need to say that um, in the update, we want to get to this uh, position, but we want to get there smoothly. To do that uh, smoothly means not instantly, but over a period of time, over a couple of milliseconds, like move in that direction. To do that, uh, there is a hook called with timing that will um, do exactly that. We'll take a value and we'll move in that direction. We'll, we'll um, based on a function, yeah, it will move in that direction uh, at a specific, for a specific number of milliseconds. 
That milliseconds is here in the duration and by default I think it's 300, 300 milliseconds. Let me do that with this one as well, with timing. We want to go in that direction, but we want to go slowly over a duration of 300 milliseconds. Let's see that did something. Uh, reload. No, something was not working with timing, with timing, value, with timing, target position cannot be converted to a value. Uh, something with this. Or ob hmm. most probably objects are not, yeah. Most probably objects cannot be a shared value. So I'm gonna split it, in, split it into the target position X, which will have only the position, the value for the X, and into the target position Y, that will have our Y position. So now in the update, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say basically target position dot X dot value equal this part and then target position dot y dot value equal to this part. Let's see if that will work like this. And uh, here should be x and dot value and here should be y dot value. Mm, let's see, let's ref oh here target position y dot value and target position dot x dot value. So now, um, yeah, something is working. It's still kind of not perfect just because um, the interval it takes this timing, which is 250 or 300 milliseconds. And the interval we call the update function, they are different. And that's, that's why we see this gap. If we're gonna provide the duration here, duration of uh, 500 as well, then it should be a very constant and a smooth animations from top, like moving along the axis. And actually that's not the case. Yeah, that, uh, that might not be the case uh, because of the easing function as well. So the easing function uh, is, the, the, yeah, basically the function that determines how the, the timing works. So with timing easing. And by default it's, um, no, I just want easing functions to show you how they work. Easing functions. For example, here is a good representation of easing functions. By default, if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, the easing is this is in out quint, might be, or just is in out sign, which kinda starts slow, then accelerates, then ends slow as well. What I'm interested in is in a very linear timing uh, f easing function to have like this linear movement without any jumping. So I'm gonna do easing here dot linear and for the Y position as well. Let's see. Yes, and now as you can see, the ball moves very smoothly without like any stops in the, in the direction that we set it's gonna, it's gonna move. Okay, perfect. But um, how fast, how often should we actually call this update function? Well, usually we call it, um, if, the, if we're targeting a 60 FPS per, yeah, 60 FPS, which is frames per second, that means that we should target calling the update function six, uh, 60 times a second. So let me actually store this value into a um, into variable. So the delta time, the delta time between the two frames are going to be 1000 divided by 
um, we can also save FPS equal 60. So divided by FPS, which would be around 17, if I'm not mistaken. So now if we use this delta that specifies how long is one frame, and if we provide it to the set interval that will co call the update function, and also the duration of our animations, then we are going, going to call our update function 60 times a second. The speed definitely increased, but we are going to control also the speed using a, a variable like here. Speed equal, let's start with, I don't know, one, and then we're gonna be able to adjust it. So target position is equal to how much we want to go multiplied by speed, multiplied by speed. And if I decrease the speed to 0 0.1 and refresh, then we're gonna have a sm sm smoother uh, animation. If I'm gonna do 0 0.5, it's gonna be much faster. Whew. So we have some very basic movement on the screen. If I'm gonna do for the X not to move, just to move it up and down. Yeah, we see it moving up and down on the screen. Let me see in the comments, what are you guys uh, doing and what do you think about this project? I think you should restart your VS code for these issues. Quick fix, import React from React. Okay, that worked. Even though we don't have to do that nowadays, but VS code thought that I have to do it. And for this animated view, does not have any construct or call signature. Mm. Ignore this error message. Actually, I think I should just uh, disable TypeScript checks here because I'm working with JavaScript at the moment. TypeScript. TypeScript, where is it? Come on. No, I will just not, not be able to, to, to find it. And just one, okay, never mind, never mind. We are good. Um, <laughs> bro, why are you coding standing up? Uh, I'm coding standing up because that's healthier. It keeps me more energized and uh, yeah, it's really nice to switch up between standing and sitting. And I mostly stand during live streams and it's a good opportunity to, to spend a bit more time standing up. Remember to clear interval on unmount. Yeah, that's actually very true. So in order to not have memory leaks, whenever we set an interval, we should also clear it. So first of all, we need to get access, uh, we need to get a reference to our interval. Uh, and when we unmount this component, basically, whenever you return a function from a use effect, this function is gonna be called when we unmount the component. So when we unmount, we want to do, uh, to call a function clear interval, interval. So this will make sure that we don't have any memory leaks. And thank you very much for pointing that out uh, in the live, live chat. Come on, did I break anything? Restart. Okay. 
Why don't you use React Native Skia? That's a good question. I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. Um, so, Aman, uh, related to that question, let me, um, let me get back to you after the live stream. So, if you can uh, send it to me like on social media, I'm gonna try to, uh, to answer because it's a bit of off topic. So, uh, where is my, <laughs> I wanted to say, where is my ball? I don't see it. Did I do something wrong with this clearing the interval? I don't think so. Hey, what happened? Let me close the application completely. And let's run it again. Okay, here is uh, our ball moving on the screen. Uh, again, what I wanted to do next, Expo Go Quit, okay, I don't know why. Uh, what I wanted to do next is to define the direction vector of our ball. And I think we're gonna start uh, drawing some things because from this moment on, it's gonna get like more and more challenging and we're gonna have to work with a bit of trigonometry, with maths, and yeah, I don't remember when is the last time I was doing that. So uh, let me open it up here. So um, if we imagine uh, the ball uh, on the screen, so let me, do it here. So if we imagine this ball here on the screen, in order for the ball to move, it needs um, to know the direction where it moves. So the direction uh, of the ball is actually a vector that if we look into this axis of uh, where this is y, this is x, this is y, this is x, yeah. So. The, the direction vector from the point in that, from the object that is pointing to the direction in which it is moving, uh, this is gonna help us, yeah, like, uh, know in what direction to move it. Damn, like, such an explanation, but damn, that's a good job. What we want to do is we're gonna store the direction of where our point is moving as a simple vector. A vector that starts from position zero, zero, if I'm gonna go here, starts from position zero, zero, and basically, let me do this vector here. If our ball is moving up on the screen, then the direction is gonna be this one, where this vector is basically uh, zero on the X and one on the Y. If it's gonna move laterally, uh, horizontally, then it's gonna have a coordinates one, zero. And it's gonna, if it's gonna move um, to the sides, basically diagonally, then it's gonna be like this. And the position are not gonna be one, one, because one, one would mean that our vector ends here. I don't know. It would mean that our vector ends here as we need like one, one like this. The problem with one, one is that whenever our ball is gonna move diagonally, if we have a direction as one, one, then the ball will move much faster than if it's gonna travel on the same axis. And we don't want that. As you can see, this whole part is longer than this part and then the horizontal part. So what we want to do is to kind of normalize the vectors 
Uh, and by normalizing the vector, what we want to do is to make sure that the vector is pointing in that direction, but the length of the vector is always one. So the length of the vector is always one and here as well. So I don't know why I uh, explain you this. We will need it, but yeah, basically that's how we're gonna keep track of a direction in which uh, our ball is moving. Let's go ahead and uh, do that. Let's go ahead and say that our, um, that our direction x is a shared value because our direction will also move. And let's say that it's one. And uh, our direction y is our use shared value. For example, let's, be, let's the direction y be one and this one be zero. Now having these two directions, let's put them inside our update function. So, <coughs> so back to our drawing. Whenever we, uh, I'm gonna remove this one from here. Whenever we try to move this ball uh, and knowing the direction in which it moves, for example, uh, if the direction move, uh, of mo movement of this item is uh, basically, how did we say? Let me do it uh, separately. So if we have this graph, we have a ball in the center and we have a direction of movement basically uh, in that direction. What we want to do is basically we want to take this uh, direction graph, put it on top of our uh, position, basically sum it with our position and multiply it by the speed because if the speed is high, then the amount of distance that our ball will travel is going to be longer. And if it, the speed is one, then it's going to be equal to our direction vector. So what we want to do is when we update, when we move a ball, we want to uh, add to our target position we want to add we want to add the direction x dot value multiplied by the speed we want to move in this direction with this speed and the same here here we have plus 10 but this 10 is going to move to direction y dot value and now And now it's moving the same way. And if I change the direction here to 0 0.2 then, and refresh, of course, then our ball is gonna start moving um, a bit diagonally. But as, as we can see, this, um, this vector is actually not normalized as the length of it is definitely more than one. And when the vector is not normalized, moving on the di diagonal is moving faster than moving um, on the same line. Um, sh shall we work on the vector normalization? Uh, let's find the formula to normalize a vector. Um, formula normalize a vector. A vector. What is the need? Okay, so for a vector that has some values, the nor normal vector that is this one is um, square root of the power x power y power. Oh, this one gives the length of the, the, the vector. When we normalize a vector, we actually calculate the, the what? <laughs> What's this already? Okay, the relationship between the normal vector and the vector, then the relationship between the 
x divided by the, oh my god. It is easy to see that the normalized vector has length of one. This is because, hence we can call normalized vector as unit vectors. Yes, that's what I know. So it turns out to define a vector in 3D space. I don't need it in 3D space. It's gonna be kind of the same. The thing is that I, I'm pretty sure we first need to calculate the Then uh, we, 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 yeah, we first need to calculate the magnitude and then divide both X and Y by that magnitude. So the magnitude is going to be calculated by uh, basically square root of the sum of the power of the two posi um, of X and Y and because my direction, we're not gonna use for the direction, the timing, I'm gonna try to use a, um, an actual object here for the direction. An object like x equal one and y equal zero. I really hope that I'm gonna be able to do that because I don't, really, I don't like working with a lot of variables. So um, let's also do const a function normalize vector equal we're gonna receive uh, a vector that will have an x and y and what we want to do is first calculate the magnitude magnitude is basically the length of our vector and the length of the vector uh, for that we are using the Pythagorean formula never uh, work with math formulas in, uh, in quite a while. So the magnitude, let me also try to, to explain it here for, for it to make more sense in my brain and also for everyone else watching. So let's say we have this vector here, which is one, one, right? It's one here and it's one here. So this is one, this is one. That means that we have a square, um, um, how is it called, a triangle with a squared angle. And which means that the magnitude, the length, uh, the length of this part is the square root of basically A, B, and this one is C. So C is equal to square root of B squared plus A squared. Yeah, let's calculate this one here. So magnitude is equal to math dot square root of vector dot X multiplied by vector dot X plus vector dot y multiply by vector dot y. And we can simply, oh, okay, we have a magnitude. And now what we want to do is to divide both x and y by the magnitude. Is that correct? So we want to divide x by the magnitude y. Yeah, let's try. So return, I'm gonna return an object with x where x is gonna be vector dot x divided by magnitude and y is gonna be vector dot y divided by magnitude. So now if I'm gonna do normalize vector, um, let's actually put it here, normalize vector like this, and I really want to, to see it. So console log the direction. So we said that we want um, the direction to point in that direction, but we need to normalize it. So the X and Y should be lower than one in order for uh, the diagonal to be the length one. So let me go back here, direction dot value. 
dot x and here direction dot value dot y. Okay, now now if I'm gonna look here, value x is 0 0.7 and y is also 0 0.7 because that's gonna be the normalized vector. And if I do x1 and uh, y0, in that scenario, they should remain the same because in this scenario, the length of this vector is one. So if I'm gonna refresh, yes, it remains the same. Okay, uh, I don't know what, what's happening here, but I'm gonna, yeah, it's moving in that direction. So uh, in this situation, even if we provide a very large vector, like 100 by 150, for example, uh, we, with a direction ve vector, we're not gonna uh, influence the speed at which the ball moves because we, normalize it beforehand and we just keep like the direction without uh, the length of it. Who uh, that's with a normalization. Um, what's gonna be the next step? The next step for us, uh, let me actually do a quick plan of what we have to do. Um, and then it's gonna be easier for us to so our little plan will be, so we already have ball movement. The ball moves based on the direction. Then we will have um, wall hit detection. We need to detect when the ball touches the wall. And when it does, we need to basically mirror his direction. That's gonna be our next task. Then we're gonna need, um, probably we're gonna start with, um, we're gonna have like, yeah, like heat detection. with a notch, with an island, with island. Uh, we're gonna have our player, how does it, how does it work? How, does it, how, how to call it, like the, the bar that will move. So player plus movement. Player plus movement, then um, we're gonna have heat detection with a player. Player, then what? Uh, score, we need to keep track of a score. Mm, some smaller animations, but yeah, like these are the most important parts that we need to do. So as I said, let's start with, uh, with detecting um, when we hit an, an wall. So when we hit an wall, um, how we're gonna understand whether we hit an wall, wall or not. We're gonna do that like uh, the top wall is basically simple. If our Y value is lower than zero, that means that we are below the screen, like we left the, the, the whole screen. If we are, yeah, like let me basically, So having our screen like this, we're gonna be able to define um, our graph actually starts uh, here. It starts here, the Y value goes like this. Let me do it. like this, and the x value goes like this. So here we have zero, zero. Z zero, zero. Uh, at this point, we have uh, our x 
is still zero, but our y is the height of the screen. Here, our, our x will be the width of the screen and our y will be zero. So if the ball position basically goes be beyond our width and height or zero and zero, in that case, we kind of understand that we hit the wall if we are out, outside the screen. So in the update, uh, in the update, let's first calculate what is, what is going to be our next uh, X. Our next X position is going to be this one. Let's put it back here, next X. And the same thing for next Y equal to our target position like this, yeah. Now let's do some checks. If next uh, y is less than zero, then let's do console log. We hit the top wall. And for that, I'm going to initialize my X, I don't know, somewhere in the middle of the screen, and I want to move in the direction zero on the X and minus one in the Y direction. So if I go like this, our ball is moving up. And when we will hit the top wall, not now, but now we see we hit the top wall. What should happen when we hit the top wall? Basically, we need to uh, bounce back, right? If we were, if our direction was going to the top, we need to move a direction to the bottom. So we simply say that our direction dot value is equal to uh, to an object where x is going to remain the same, direction dot value dot x, but our y position we are going to uh, reverse it. So if it was one, it's gonna be minus one. If it was 0 0.5, it's gonna be zero point, minus 0 0.5. So let's do minus direction dot value dot y. And let's see if now it's gonna work and I'm gonna increase the speed to one just to do it faster. And our ball is moving there. We hit the wall once and it reverted the direction uh, back there. Now it's not gonna do anything if we hit the bottom wall because we only checked for the top wall. But let's do the same for if next.y is more than the height. So if it's more than the height, which we need to take from height and width from use window dimensions, so if it's more than height, we also want to revert the direction. And let me increase the speed to three even more so we can see the ball moving up and down. And back up. Okay, that's good. We hit the wall. And let's go ahead and do the same for our uh, X value. So if it's less than zero, that means we hit the left wall, and if it's more than width of the screen, we hit the right wall. And the direction, I'm gonna copy it from here. When we hit the right wall, we want to keep the same Y direction, but reverse the X direction. And now I'm gonna give some random, um, let's do math.random, and for the Y, also math.random. And if I'm gonna refresh, let's go, we see it right away. So 30 speed, let's go. We have a working kind of physics uh, of a ball moving on the screen. And he, we have properly uh, implemented detection 
hit the interaction with the walls. All right. Hmm. Change line 50 to next Y. Line 50. Line 50 to next. Okay, yes, you are you are right. So with timing here, we need to go to the next Y. That's right, thank you very much. Um, Oh, um, I'm gonna slow it down a bit and I'm, uh, we're gonna look at one bug. Uh, for example, the left and the top walls are actually implemented correctly. The ball just touches them and reverse. But the right and the bottom walls, we are kinda losing the ball behind there. So that means that we need to check, hmm. Uh, probably I'm gonna have to do minus the width of the ball because our width of the ball is 25. Let me actually save it, const ball width 25, ball here I want to say ball width. And when we are checking for the right position, um, yeah, just in order to show you, um, I want to say left is the screen width. And if I do that, we do not see it at all. But if I do screen width minus ball width, then it's right there where we expect it to be, barely touching the right side with the border. So that means that when calculating if it touched the screen or not, from the height we need to uh, subtract uh, ball width and from the width as well, ball, ball width. Now, yes, now it touches exactly where it has to. Another issue that I'm not sure how how uh, if it's gonna happen very often, but it might happen, is that we are actually changing the direction, but we continue with the same movement. So what I want is maybe, um, maybe have a function uh, that is going to be called get next position. Uh, it will receive it will receive a position where, no, it's not gonna receive anything because it knows everything. It's then going to, let's copy these two lines from here. Next Y. Um, with direction. Let me do it a bit differently. I'm gonna do return an object with X where X is gonna be this one and Y is going to be this one. Yeah, like this. Now uh, get next po pose, const next position equal get next pose. Now, next position, I'm gonna have to update a bit here. Y here, next position dot Y, uh, next position dot X, next position dot X, uh, with timing to next position dot X, next position dot Y. 
And um, what I wanted to say is that if these things happen, I want to change the direction and I also want to change the next position, not because we detected that in the next frame, we are gonna hit the wall. So basically don't go there. <laughs> Uh, move a direction and also recalculate where we want our next position to be. So for that, I'm gonna make this next posi position a lot. And if these things is uh, true, I'm gonna change the direction dot value. Then I'm gonna set next position do equal get next position. And I want to double check if it's gonna work properly. If it's gonna work properly because the direction let me do console log before I want direction, direction dot value. And I want to check it after because a state, ver a state variable doesn't change at the same time, but a shared value, I need to double check that. Uh, that's gonna happen when we hit the top wall before. Is it completely the same? Before and after, it's completely the same. Then, um, then, Then I'm gonna do const new direction equal to this one. Uh, new direction, direction value equal new direction. And I also want to give this new direction to the get next pose. get next pose, that's gonna be X and Y from the direction. Direction, uh, it's... DX and D... Mm -mm. So direction dot X, direction dot Y. We're gonna receive this direction here when we call get next position. So here I'm gonna send direction dot value before okay 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 const let let me console log here just to see if we actually did that correctly. Console log initial uh, next pose. next pose. I'm going to do it here. And recalculate next pose, that's going to be this one. I'm going to probably have to do the same for all of them. Here, const const new direction is gonna be this one. And we're gonna send the new direction here. And yeah, that's it. Let me see. Let's run it and let's see if it recalculates it correctly when we hit the wall. Uh, I don't need to call it here always. So, so initial position, uh, yes, X is kind of the same, but Y is different. So initially he wanted to go to 902, but because the screen is only 900 pixels, it said like, hey, I need to revert the direction and also I need to update uh, my next position to a, a value, like a proper value, not to go behind the screen. So with that being said, our um, ball movement is finalized. Uh, let's see if we can maybe simplify something from here. 
Mm. Can we or shall we keep it like this? New direction, new direction, new direction. I'm going to keep it like this. Um, because there are other important stuff to, to build today. So uh, from our task list, we are done with wall heat detection. We are done here, we are done here. Now it's time for Ooh, heat detection with an island. Ooh, that's gonna be a bit more challenging because we have to provide like a lot of, we're gonna either have to do a lot of if statements or we're gonna have to um, develop like a proper game engine with proper heat detection based on different objects. Because with the screens, like as you can see, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty clear how, how it works. Uh, but now with a dynamic island, first of all, let me, let me simulate the dynamic island outside of that island just for us to see like what we have to work with. So the style is gonna be, I don't know, width 200, height. 40, uh, background color, black, and border, radius 20. Okay, so we have here in the middle something. Now our goal is to detect, um, is to detect when we touch each other when the ball touches this um, dynamic island in the middle of the screen or basically this view, this box. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment out the border radius because that uh, having a box and trying to define if a ball touched a box, it's much easier than a, 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 another shape. So I'm gonna comment it out and we're gonna work with a proper box. And this way we will try to define if the ball touched the, um, the sides or not. Hmm. It also will need a position absolute because we also need to know where, where it is. It basically needs top. 200, for example, and left 20. So this way we know where it starts. We know the width, we know the height. And we're gonna have to, <laughs> to, to determine if it touched or not. Hmm, boy. Okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna just put them in some variables. Maybe later we will need them dynamic and to move, but we, we can do that. What I want to do is um, obstacle um, position. Let me do it like this, obstacle or island position, island position. That's gonna be our X 200, Y 40, let's say, and our, island uh, dimensions is going to be on X, it has 200, or should we do width? Or it's gonna be clear what X means, it means width. And Y 20, for example. So let's give these values here. So top it's gonna be island position dot Y, left is going to be island island position dot x and the width is going to be island dimension dot x and island dimension dot y for the height i don't know why it's there 
uh, target position. Oh, uh, target. Why? So thousand two hundred. Yeah, that's better. Forty. Okay, something like that. I don't uh, need to to place it anywhere specifically. I just need to know the coordinates and based on these coordinates to try to detect um, touches. Change the speed to oh, 20, I wanna see the rocket. <laughs> speed 20, let's go. Let's go, I can do 200. Whoo, <laughs> it works. Let's go. Um, by the end, actually, let's add another task. Uh, by the end, I want to increase the speed as we progress. Uh, and that's, yeah, gonna make the game more interesting. Increase uh, the ball speed dynamically. Um, let let me actually start by searching something. If there is anything that will make it a bit easier for me, otherwise we're gonna go to the drawing board and try to understand how to detect this uh, heat detection. So heat detection formulas, collision detection, 2D collision detection, game development. Yes, that's what I want. Depend on the shapes that can collide. Rectangles to rectangles, rectangle to a circle. Yes, we need rectangle to a circle. Uh, generally, you will have to a simple generic shape that covers the entity known as the hitbox. The hitbox is our black square. So even though collision may not need be pixel perfect, it will look good enough and be performant across multiple entities. Axis aligned bounding box. One of the simpler forms of collision detection is between two rectangles that are axis aligned, meaning no rotation. Okay, the algorithm works by ensuring there is no gap between any of the four sides of a rectangle. Any gap means a collision does not exist. Uh, what I'm reading, I'm reading something very specific. So dimension one, X, width, and height. Oh, I can do X, Y, width, and height actually in the same, um, in the same position. So island dimensions, X, Y, and here let's do width 200 and height 40. And that's gonna be even easier for us. Island Y, Island X, Island Width, and Island Dimensions dot Height. Okay, now we are working only with one. Uh, rectangle one. If X minus is left rectangle. If X plus with more than rectangle one X circle collision. Now a simple shape for collision detection is between two circles. Valgrind works by taking the center points of the two circles and ensuring the distance between the center points are less than the two radii added together. Two circles, it's actually very easy. We just take the radius and we check if the distance between the circle is less than their radius, the sum, sum of their radius, then it means that we are not collision. If it's less than, it means that we are colliding. So we take the radius, Mm. So we're gonna have to kinda merge together the circle collision with an um, 
box collision. But what if we consider our circle a box? Yeah, what if we consider our circle a box? And I'm gonna actually do that. I'm gonna do a view inside it that is going to have background color uh, red. It's gonna have position absolute. It's gonna have width 100 percent and height 100 percent why it, it doesn't matter um but if we consider them like this then we can use the formula to calculate this so let's try collision detected Let's try this formula in our uh, update method. Uh, we're gonna do it probably here. So if rectangle one, uh, we're gonna consider rectangle one, the position of our um, dot. So rectangle one is going to be pos um, next position dot X. A rectangle two is our notch, so island dimension, island dimension dot x, island dimension width. Then, yeah, let's now go ahead and move rectangle one dot x, rectangle one is the next pose. I'm gonna move everything where I see rectangle one with next pose and is dimension, I'm gonna replace with rectangle two. No, is the <laughs> next pose doesn't have a width. Uh, so for that reason, I'm gonna say, I know that the width of a ball, I know it here. Next pose. No, where, where, where is next pose dot width? Height, next pose dot height. console log collided oh it collided right away why it oh it starts from the same part this color didn't do anything there so let's see if it's gonna detect the next time when it collides but oh my god it doesn't have a normal direction yes we see that it collided for a couple of frames and then it collided again all right so it properly detects the collision with this box uh, what do we want to do when it collides well we really need to know if we have to if it collided with top or bottom we need to basically reverse the direction. Hmm. So new direction. I think I will have to split this into two if statements. Uh, let's think what from four variables, which ones are for the um, top parts. So the island dimension X plus island dimension width. This is for the sides. This is for the sides. If I'm gonna do here console log touched the side of the island and when we check the sides 
then we modify the y direction. We modify the y direction, I think. And in the other two cases, In the other two cases, we're gonna do X and let's do touched the top bottom side touched the left right side of island. Okay, the ball is still there. I need to initialize it with um let's say width divided by two and height divided by two but for that our windows dimension should be more to the top so what's happening here i don't know that's weird <laughs> that's very weird touched the left uh, left right side um, I know, I know, I know, I know. It actually, I think it actually needs to be in the same if statement. Oh, ho, 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 ho. It needs to be in the same here. But how to determine if we touched the sides or something worked there. Look, something is working. Uh, not till the end, because we still need to determine how we want, which one we want to redirect, X or Y. So do you have any ideas, uh, any interesting ideas how we can detect? I can do the same if statement one more time. Mm, to be honest, I need to fully understand this one. If next position X is less than the island dimensions. Mm, let me draw something and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to understand better. So uh, we have our phone. This is our normal graph, how it, uh, how it looks. And um, we have our island here. And we said that uh, this position is, let's say 50 here, 50 here and 50 here. The height is gonna be 40 and the width is gonna be 200. Now our formula works like this. And ball width, we know that it's uh, 25, right? So if our ball is somewhere, if it tries to move, for example, here, we are gonna check if it tries to move somewhere, somewhere inside, we are gonna check if next position dot X, X for us is this one, let's say it's 100 is less than the island dimension dot x, island dimension dot x, that's 200, plus island dimension dot width. No, 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 island dimension dot x. I need to, to have them both here on the screen for us to see. So if island dimension dot x, the x position, this one, plus width, that's plus 200, yes, that's here 250. 
if it is less than that, and if next position dot x, next position dot x, which is 100 plus ball width 125, if it is more than island dimension dot x, if it is more than this one, then we know that we are somewhere in this, uh, in this part. And the next two will do the same and will decide if it is inside this part. So if it's between these two lines and between these two lines, that means that we are hitting it. Uh, how to understand where are we hitting it from? That's the question. To check, hmm. Next position. We can calculate because the ball is moving. So the ball is not touching yet. It is moving in that direction. So we can check what, mm, what part it intersects. But the thing is that the, the, mm -hmm. for the top notch, I think it's we don't have to complicate ourselves that much. We need to consider that it always touches from the bottom. So I can do, yeah, probably this one is the right. Like X, we keep the same X. We just change the Y direction. I think that's going to be how we actually want it to work or not. No, because if it goes from the side, then that's not very good. <laughs> it enters there, basically. Um, okay, 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 I know. Uh, I, I think I have an idea. So to determine if it comes from the sides, we need to know if our current position is somewhere either here or here. Because if it's here or here, and if our current position is on this part, and then we try and uh, uh, collide with our notch, that means that we're coming from the side. So um, here, let's do it like this. If our current position, not next position, but current position, if if our target position uh, dot x is less than um, is less than uh, this side, like the 50. So the 50 is island dimension dot x or if it's more than, if target position dot x is more than the, the sum of these two, because here on the screen we need 250. Basically 50, which is the x position and the width of the screen. So if it is more than that, 
and I need dot value and here dot value. Then console log hitting from the side. Else we are touched the top bottom side. And here, if I'm going to do the same with the new direction, only we're going to change the X. Let's see if it will work this time. Hmm, that's interesting. It worked once. Uh, if I'm going to increase the speed to 10, just for us to see it. Yes, it works from the top. It works. I'm going to do the island dimension height 100 and width also 100. Okay, it works. I think it works. Come on. Height, let's do 200 and 200 here and 300 here just to have it here. And the speed, I'm going to do 30. And yes, it works. Oh my God, I'm so happy. Yes. Amazing. So that means that knowing some, some information about uh, obstacles, we can detect collisions with them. Oh. And now I can go ahead and remove um, the, that thing from here, from the ball. And it can remain a ball. And I can say that um, the island dimension, I'm going to do them very manually. So the X, uh, the Y is going to be probably at 30, even less, 20, 10. I'm going to be very manual about it. 11, uh, the X is going to be 100 to not, not the best, uh, 130, 150 is too much, no, it's not too much, 160, yes, 60 is too much, 55 is, yeah, 50 I think should be it, uh, for the width, I think it's 150, too much, 30, probably good, 20, it's too little, 130, and for the height, what, uh, 50, and if I do this with red, okay, now I'm going to see it better, so the height is not 50, but probably 30, 35, um, yeah, 36, 7, yes, like this, the width is less a bit, 127, yeah, something like this, all of them are so, so weird, like this values, Okay, that's good. So we have an island position correctly there. I can also give this island uh, visually the border radius back, but the heat detection will still work based on the, um, how's it called? The um, square, not the square, rectangle. I'm gonna, I removed also the background red, not to, to see it. And yeah, it's perfect. I think it works. So if I'm gonna, do speed 10. Yes, it kind of works. Uh, go through it sometimes. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking about this formula. Let me look at it once more time. One more time. So the formula here, okay, it's already a mess. So I'm going to Okay, I'm going to start 
again here. What I wanted to check is whether we add the ball bar. Hmm. So let's say we have our graph. This is X, this is Y. Um, and then we have our island here and our ball somewhere here. What we are checking so the mo ball is trying to move from here towards towards this position. Let me check. So if next position dot x, next position, and we are always keeping track of the top right corner, for example, this corner and this top left corner, sorry. <laughs> I, I always um, confuse left with right, but that's okay. So if next position dot X, which is this one, no, I need to, to actually check it with this scenario because this one is a collision, but our next position is here. So if, next position dot x which is here this one let's say is 100 this one should be i don't know 99 so if next position dot x is smaller than the island di dimension dot x island dimension dot x is this one is this one plus island dimension dot width which is this width Mm, is it less? Yes, it is less. But is it more than that one? If next position, 99 plus ball width, plus ball width, which is this corner. Yes, actually it works correctly. I was thinking where we are adding this ball width is more than the island dimension dot x. Is it more than island dimensions? Oh, yeah, 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 island dimension dot x, if it's more than this part, it's more than this dot, it's more, okay, should be working. Ball with plus next pose, why, if it's more, next position dot y this one it's less than the island dimensions dot y plus island dimension dot height yes it is less 25 plus next position dot y If it is more, yeah, yeah, I think I think it works. I think it sh it should be uh, good in our scenario as well. Okay, so that means that we are done with one of the important parts: heat detection with the island. So this one for us is done. And we can go to the next step. The next step is actually interesting, player movement. So for the player movement, we're kind of going to have... Uh, I don't need this commented thing. I don't need this.
I'm always saying direction dot value equal new direction, next position, get new position in all of these if statements. This is the part that I repeat. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm going to extract it outside of all my if statements like this direction dot value is new direction. And for the new direction, I'm going to move it out as, as let let new direction. I'm gonna assign the value of our current direction. So direction dot value. And then here, I'm gonna remove const for the new direction in order to update that one. And I'm gonna remove this direction dot get pause. I think it should work because we calculate the new direction once. Let's see, it works here, will it work? Yes, it works. Perfect, perfect. The, now it's a bit more clear, like here, we do wall detection. Uh, here, we do island detection, island hit detection, wall hit detection. Now, the next step, as I said, we want, uh, the same way as we have an island there, we want to have our player. The player uh, is gonna be some uh, space from the top, like, I don't know, top 400. And it's gonna have a background color of uh, black. Okay, it's here. It doesn't have heat detection yet, yet. but uh, what we want to do is we are going to have, well, top is gonna be equal to height minus some spacing, yeah? Somewhere there on the bottom. Uh, for the width, let's do dimensions. for player dimension, player dimensions. Player dimensions, we're not gonna be static, but I'm gonna define all of them here. For example, what, yeah, let me do it like this. So player, here is the player, player. Island. So what I want to do here is player dimension dot x not dot y player dynam dimension dot x here width and height and from the top I'm gonna just move it to the because I need height and width for this let me move it here. So I want the Y of our player to be at height minus 100. There, I want the wave to be a bit more, uh, something like this. And X, I don't know, something like this. Or should we do, uh, width of a screen divided by two. And then the X is gonna be width divided by four to be in the center. We have half of the screen is our, this one and half of the screen, yeah. Okay, player dimensions we have here. Now we need to basically move them. To move a player on the screen, we're gonna use the gesture handler. So uh, for the gesture handler, 
we can go, let, let, let's look at the React Native Reanimated library because it has a hook called Use Animated Gesture Handler. And in order to use this hook, Use Animated Gesture Handler, we need to install and configure Gesture Handler in our project. So for that, what we have to do is go into the installation with the expo, run expo install React Native Gesture Handler in our project. Let's do that. Come on, npx expo install React Native Gesture Handler like this. And then what do we need to do? The expo is again incorporated. After installation, wrap your entire entry point with a gesture handler root view. Uh, yes, let's do that. And gesture handler root view. We need to wrap our whole application with this. So the root view of our application is gonna be our gesture handler and let's make sure to import it from that library that we just installed. Now, um, what we want to do is to, is to make this view animated, animated dot view and also so so we basically have to de define a pan gesture um, component that will uh, give us, that will handle that events of a pun gesture. So if I go here, uh, API reference, gestures, pun gesture. Uh, do you have some examples? Gesture detect detection. Yeah, I think it's quite uh, quite simple. So we are gonna do a pun gesture from React Native Gesture Handler. Uh, this is a normal view, so it can accept styles. So style. Mm. Yeah, let's do style here. Uh, I'm gonna do, does it accept pun gesture? Maybe we can assign like the, uh, a child with a view here to see the position of this element. So view style with, I don't know, 100, height 100, background color, background color red. So where will it be positioned? In the center, uh, what we want to do is do a position, absolute, bottom, bottom, zero. Okay, position, absolute, bottom, zero. Uh, for the width, I want to say that the width should be 100% and the height, uh, I want to define this block as a block that will handle our touch events. So I will actually do, I don't know, uh, height of, a I don't know, let's say 200 pixels, like this part of a screen to handle the touch events of, uh, of us trying to move our player. Now um, I can remove this background color red just for you to know like that this pun gesture handler is there, like we just don't see it, but it's there. And if you add the background color, you can right away see this component. Now we can remove it. And using the uh, use animated gesture handler, we can define the, what should happen when we detect some gestures. So let's scroll down a bit. 
For example, here, just handler, or let's do gesture handler equal use animated gesture handler. And here we need to provide an object, uh, object with a couple uh, with a couple of um, uh, events that can happen. One of the events is on start. This is going to be an event. There is an event uh, on active and on end. Basically what we want to do, like the on start event is going to be called once when we start dragging uh, on that component, on that, um, yeah. We need to provide it there because we didn't provide the gesture to our pun gesture handler as uh, come on, how to pun gesture handler props. So come on, um, let me check the iOS 16 project that we just finished. <clears throat> Source components, where did we do this? In the, probably in the screen. Screen, lock screen, gesture. Yes, and we gave it to a pun gesture, on gesture event. So that's what I was looking for. The on gesture event should be the function that we define here. Gesture handler. I think we have to restart the application because we installed gesture handler. So let's go ahead and do npm start again. And let's do a running on iOS. And I might see what's the problem because our use animated gesture handler is not inside the gesture handler root view. That might be uh, actually the problem, but we can solve it if it's true. Yes, when gesture handler event listener, listener to be a function is then got a value of object. Use animated console log event that we receive here. What is the problem? Is it indeed that one? Um, listener to be a function instead got a value of object. handler event on gesture handler event gesture handler. On gesture handler. Hmm, what's different? Most probably, yeah, it's because it's because we uh, have everything in our application and our root view, basically our use animated gesture handler is not inside the root view. That's what I think. So for that, I'm going to create a new file here, game.js. And for, I'm going to copy everything from the application to the game.js. I'm going to go back to our application and I'm going to remove everything that is inside our, everything except the gesture handler root view, the status bar, and that's it. And now like the same with the function, we will not need in app.js all of this get next position and so on. So let's remove all of the things that we don't need here, like this. 
normalized vector, island dimension. Yeah, basically all of this. And we will simply in the application of that. Let me clear everything. So now in our application, let's render our game, game component that we will import, import game from this file game. Now in our game.js, let's go ahead and um, do export default function game. Then we will remove the gesture handler root view and we'll simply replace it with a normal view. I don't even think that we need the view, like, mm, but maybe let's let's keep it. Come on, why view style styles dot container we had here, and then we will not need the status bar, and I think that's it. The rest we need. So can variable get next pose? Decrease the width of a player based on score to a limited number, like until it reaches 50 and stop decreasing. I was thinking to increase the speed of a player. Something weird happened, most probably with our containers and so on. So if I do to this container background color uh, red, background, background, background. Oh, I have it already, red. Then I should see that it's What's going on here? View styles container. Container, background color, red. Height, 100%. Width, 100%. Okay. Uh, and I don't need height because I have flex one. And I probably don't need this one as well. Okay, now it's good. Back to normal, but it's the same error. It's the same issue. That means it what? Uh, Vadim, will you add messaging features in your Tinder clone? Uh, Tinder clone, I'm not sure if I'm, we're gonna continue it. Um, we don't have it in our plans. But I really recommend you to try to look at two different builds, one where we have chatting application and Tinder, and try to put them together and merge them together. That's gonna be a challenge for you, but it's possible. Like the things that we, the most, the, the most difficult things of building the chatting functionalities we already have. You can check out a lot of projects on our um, channel, for example, the WhatsApp clone, and just put those features as a separate screen in your Tinder clone. It's, it, it should be possible. Uh, guys, what's going on with our use animated gesture handler event? Anyone has any ideas? Expected on gesture handler listener to be a function instead got an object type. Though not specified in the docs, but can be inferred from the example, Pinder handler requires an animated component child inside. It requires an animated component child inside. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and do that. I remember, yeah, like, I remember what it actually needs. So this one is gonna be animated.view. Now, now it works. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, what do we see here? We see console log event and we see a lot of values. Basically, how far did we move a finger on the X, on the Y, um, how fast did we do that and so on. 
So what we want to do is we want to store in a shared value the player position. Player uh, position equal uh, use shared value. That's going to be an object with x. And I'm going to basically take them from here. Oh, player position. Player position, player position. I need to come here and take it from player position, player position dot y dot value dot y dot value dot y and here player position dot value dot x. Now it's going to be back there. But when we move our finger there, what we want to do is we want to change the player position. Player uh, position value is going to be equal to an object where we are going to keep the X. Basically, we're going to keep the player player. Po Why player pose? Is it? Yeah, player pose dot value, but we're going to change the X because we want the X to follow the, um, our finger. So we're going to do event dot absolute X. Is it absolute X? So if I do it like this, nothing changes. Is it X? X. Yes. Event dot absolute X. Player pose. console log event console log event what's going on here oh something was ha oh okay 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 something is happening but it's not updating right away because our player no our player is an animated view but the style of our player is not an animated style so the same way as we define the animated style for the ball, we need to do player animated styles equal use animated style. It's going to be a function that will return uh, an object. So it has top. And no, actually the only the X position, only the left position is the one that will move. So I want to do left is equal to player pose dot value dot x so player animated position i'm gonna remove left from here and i'm gonna add it as a separate style at the end as animated player style player animated style i called it not working oh but not here Vadim oh okay wait a second not on the island but on the player so I'm gonna remove a left from here and I'm gonna add it as a separate an player animated style and yes it works the problem is that it uh, it will follow the hmm it will f move basically to, to here. Mm. How to, to properly do it? Let me check how we did it here for the iOS lock screen. So on active Y value, event absolute dot Y, using absolute position I was doing there. Uh, absolute dot x mm. I think I just need to to do that, but to kinda track to 
to kind of track the middle of the um, of the thing. So player position dot value equal to event absolute dot x minus player dimension dot width minus player dimension dot width divided by two. I want half of it. And now we are in the middle. Let me check it on, on my phone actually to, to just see how it feels. Uh, let's scan the QR code. And, and actually the next step is, gonna, is going to be to do heat detections with this one as well in our update function. So here we have island heat detection. Let's copy this island heat detection and do player heat detection. So next pose.x island dimension, well, player dimension.x. Uh, for the x, we're gonna work with player pose.value.x. And for the width, we're gonna do player dimensions. Then we have next pose dot x plus ball with island dimension dot x. That's gonna be player pose dot value. Island dimension value, island dimension height. This is gonna be player dimensions. Uh, island dimension dot y, this is gonna be this one. Then if target position Target position, target, target. Island dimensions dot X. That's going to be player. Player. Dimensions. Okay, I think it should be like this. And let's see. Yes, yes, it works. Yes, it works. Oh my God, I'm so happy for this. <laughs> Look at this. And I have it also here on the screen. I'm gonna refresh it. It works, it works. And on iOS, it also, uh, on my phone, it also works pretty well, even though I don't have this notch. Okay, so uh, we have heat detection with a player. That's perfect. Um, we have player movement. Do you have any ideas on how I could Im Im improve this? I don't know, tell me. Uh, but that means that we are done with player movement. And we can, uh, we are also done with heat detection with a player. Now we need to keep track of the score. Keeping track of a score is actually uh, not that complicated. Hitting track of a score, we're gonna use uh, a state variable so let's do here const uh, score set score equal use state zero. We're gonna start with zero. Let's display the score. Actually, I want to display it somewhere in the middle here. Um, so for example, below the island, I'm gonna have a text and there I'm gonna display the score like this. For the text uh, style, let's do styles dot score. I want to give it a font size of 100, like crazy. Even more, font width, weight 500.
I want, uh, let's also position it absolute because I want it not right in the middle, but top, I don't know, 200, something like this, 150. And for the color, let's do something like this. And is displayed above the ball. Can we display it below the ball? No, I'm gonna have to display it above a ball here. Yes, yeah, perfect, perfect. Now, uh, when do we increase the score? Well, we increase the score when we hit the island. So when we hit the island, we need to set score to the score plus one. That's it. Let's try to hit the island. Okay, like this, come on. And will I do it? <laughs> I need to test if it works. <laughs> come on. Yes, it works. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Score. So does that mean that we have implemented the scoring system? I think so. Uh, increase the ball speed. When does the player lose? Does the player lose when we uh, when we fail to to hit the ball and it falls there? If yes, use score plus one. But that's what I'm doing. Score plus one. Here, I'm using an update function just because. Um, just because I want to properly update it. If I do score plus one, this is not guaranteed that it's gonna properly work. Um, because whenever we update the state and we depend on the previous value, then we need to use um, update function that will receive that score here and we will uh, update it. So that's why I had it like this. Can the game uh, uh, end when we hit the bottom? Yes, we can do that. Let's do then uh, another part here. Uh, const game over, set game over, equal use state false. Let's try to do it true. Uh, and for the game over, where we have that, I don't know, score. Let's also do um, a text game over. Game over. So for the game over, it's not gonna be 150, but I don't know, 30, and the color will be red. And will it work? Yeah, we see there, game over. Uh, top 130, should be good. Don't like the red, but what to do, what to do? So uh, if the game is over, uh, if the game is over, the ball should stop moving. So that means that, well, we will basically remove the ball from here. Game over. 
So we're gonna display the ball only when the game is not over. Otherwise, we're gonna hide it. Where did we get eight points from? Nine. Because when, even if we don't see the ball, it's actually <laughs> moving behind the scenes. So in the update, let's do if game is over, I'm gonna stop the update. We don't want to do anything there. Game over. And when game is over, look what, when, what I'm gonna do for the player. I'm gonna simply have like, I don't know, here somewhere a button with a title restart and on press restart game. The restart game function, what's gonna do the restart game function? Let's put the ball position, target position x dot value in the middle of a screen. So width divided by two. Let's put the, uh, the y position also in the middle of a screen. Uh, let's set the score to zero. And let's set game over to false. So when we open, we see game over, we can press restart nothing happens, uh, false, restart, and we should start playing, set game over to false. False, and It's not moving. Is it because of this one? Let's uh, let's do the check with a game over here. So in the use interval, we're gonna have a function that will do if uh, game is not over, then we want to update. And, uh, the restart button will be visible only if game is not over, or only if game is over, actually. Game over. Um, and with the game over, let's actually not display the button, but let's display a view that con will contain both the button and it will also contain the, the game over thing. So style, styles dot game over container. Game over container. So game over container, this is gonna be the absolute position that will be on the top. One size, okay. So let me try to put it into th uh, to reset. Mm -hmm. mm, maybe game over container will be somewhere 350. So if I press restart, doesn't start moving. Oh, because yeah, I think I'm gonna add game over here. Yes, uh, because we depending on the game over in this use effect function. And now let's calculate when we set the game over. Basically when we touch the wall on the bottom. 
um, island heat detection, wall heat detection. And if y is less than zero here, so if next pose dot y is less than zero, that's actually should be as a separate function. And it shouldn't be here because in this situation, we set game over to true. Restart from zero. Okay. Oh, no, 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 the other way, the other way around. Like this one should be here and this zero is the top. So the top should be good. Like this, restart, boom, one, two. And if I fail, game over, game over. Oh my God. It's a, it's, it's a proper game already. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. Do not forget to like, content, share, and hit the subscribe button. Thank you, Olatundia, for remembering everyone what the most important thing to do. Subscribe, like the video, and turn on the notification bell in order not to miss our future videos. Because we go live every Friday. Even when I have more important stuff to, to do, I go live every Friday. So yeah, so far it's a pretty, pretty complete project, I think, uh, at the moment. Uh, what I can do here, of course, like it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of things, but looking at the video, um, stop, stop, stop. Okay, this video might be demonetized, but what can we do? So looking at this video, I see that there are some micro animations. For example, when the ball touches the... Um, when the ball touches the island, the island kind of shakes. When, come on, let me see. Yeah, so when the ball touches, the island kind of shakes. Um, shall we do that? Hey, Mayron, welcome to Nojas Developer. Um, and thank you very much for supporting us financially. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Mm, okay, guys. So yeah, as I said, uh, I was thinking to add like these shake functionalities. <laughs> the shake functionalities here on the dynamic island when we hit it. Uh, let me think how we're gonna do that. Um, so we've animated. Mm. Yeah, 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 okay. Maybe I can try to add some layout animations, but no. So what I want to do is I want to have an animated view on the island. Uh, the island. If I make this island animated view and the top left width, for the width, if I save it, I want with timing 
to move uh, to the width plus or width multiplied by 1.2, which is going to be 120%. I want to increase the um, width here. I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. With timing. And it also has to have a background color red. With Two. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening uh, with timing? It should kind of work. Um, animated view. Why with timing doesn't work here? I want to go to that position. Can anyone tell me why this doesn't work with, with timing? Because it's not a shared value. Oh, uh, t -t 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 Vadim, 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 think. I wanted to do with timing and then uh, to wrap it with repeat just to, to repeat the same thing, but with repeat that we can import. But it doesn't seem to that it's gonna work. Style should be defined in use animated style. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think so as well. So island, const, I, Island animated styles equal use animated style. I don't know why I thought that it's gonna work in there as well. So these two should be here. Use animated style, let's give it to our island as the second style here. Like this. Okay, now something wor is working there. Uh, to, to, to island animated styles with, and if I do multiply by 1.2 and here 1 point, multiply by 1.2. Mm. 
Not exactly what I wanted. Oh my god, uh... I need to trigger uh, the animation when we... Dependency list. It can have a dependency list. And if I do score as a dependency list, So we're going to repeat a sequence with sequence. With sequence. Uh, so the sequence will be with timing to 1.2, then back to this. And then back to 1.2. I think it's gonna... It's gonna be a complicated um, animation, just this small animation. And this is height, this is also height. <laughs> Looks so weird. And the opacity, kind of the same to Zero here, one. I'm using JavaScript at the moment. Yeah, the view is not centered, I know. Maybe I need to keep the island as a normal view and then inside this island to have the uh, animation. What do you say? And inside this to have an animated dot view. And I'm gonna get the styles from here. In the first view, we don't need the animated styles and we don't need this one as well. Uh, So this one will have position absolute, but the second one not. Hey. Okay, that's weird. This one will not have top and left. How? Aman, I saw your message and I asked for you. You remember it. 
my brain is frying. No, I think that... Let me just check if it will be re-triggered when we change the score. Oh my god, come on. Yes, it re-triggers. So it means that we kind of have to make it proper. We kind of have to make it properly. Um, I'm going to abandon the island uh, at all. And I'm going to do the animation completely separately, like this. I'm going to put them into a, another view. This view will be background color blue. Blue. I want it with position absolute. I want it at the top, similar to our top, I don't know, 20. A width 200 and height 200. Okay, something like that. Um, even zero on the top. Uh, island dimension dot height plus 20, not for the width, this one I meant for the height, like this, and for the width is width plus 20, like this. So we have 10 pixels on the top, 10 pixels on the bottom there. Now I'm gonna put this animated view here, and I want to align items center and flex justify content also center, basically aligning that. And something is working, something is working. Uh, for the height, I think it should have more like 23. I'm gonna put here 50. Okay. And I'm gonna remove the blue from here. And I'm gonna make this animated uh, black. And I'm gonna make them repeat, not 10 times, but three times. And let's increase the space with 1.5 and 1.5, let's see. And we have a score here, so we need to think. Uh, well, it's gonna happen the first time. Border radius, I need to increase it to 50. But it doesn't have to be absolute, I think, already. The way we work with opacity, I think, is not correct. Opacity with sequence. With repeat, with sequence. First thing, we go to 1.5. And then, we, yeah, we go to zero, then. Oh, because we need repeat here free. Now we're gonna wait until when it will hit it. Mm. Uh, 
too much, too... Don't like it very, very much. So it should not go that far, probably to 1.3, it's gonna be good. I can decrease the duration to 100 to all of them. And maybe not with timing, with spring. No. I'm very bad at animations. <laughs> it looks so bad. It's only once, like... Pfft. Why do I have with repeat? Let me remove a with repeat. Maybe it's gonna look better. With repeat. Restart, let's go. Restart. <laughs> I'm so bad. Should be once, once guys, once. Restart. It's still a couple of times. What if we have only the second one? Restart. Oh, if the ball moves like this, good luck. No, 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 it doesn't work like this. So, okay, I'm gonna, I, I'm okay with this one. Uh, it was a pretty interesting challenge. I'm happy with how it turned out till the end. I really didn't expect uh, that I will be man. I will manage to implement all of these features for this game, especially when it comes to like physics and detecting hit collisions and so on. But it was really a fun challenge. Uh, it made me think. <laughs> it made me research, learn new stuff with animations. And in the end, like, we have a pretty working game, which looks really nice. Increase the duration value, the duration. Um, should I leave it the default one? I think I should. I need a way to kind of reset, uh, reset these values. This is my problem, because I'm resetting them by going back. I don't need to do that. Uh, but yeah. Something is happening. 1.3, Ellen Dimension. Yeah, the problem is that they don't need to go back to one. It should start from one. I have a genius, genius idea. Let me try that. If I'm gonna use layout animations and always change the key of that animation, custom animations, entering animations, Mm, which one I want? I want bounce. Do I want bounce? Flip, shake, stretch. What do I want? 
זום. No, I want the slide. Shake, shake, I want. Shake it, shake it. Not this one. Light speed, no. Pinwheel, what's that? Oh. Roll. Rotate. No. Bounce in. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do it with bounce in. So let, let me just try my idea if it's gonna be easier. So here we have an animated, the animated thing. I'm going to comment it out. I'm going to take only this view. I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna say that the background color is red and I don't need it larger than this one. I can, it can be like this then. Now, uh, this is gonna be an animated dot view and I'm gonna provide an entering animation. The entering animation is gonna be bounce, bounce in. So if I do, where is it? Animated view, entering, uh, bouncing. Bounce in. Okay, and if I do key, our key of this object to be the score, so every time the score changes, it's gonna be a different key. Will it work? Let's try. Come on. Come on, come on. I'll make the ball bigger just to, to hit that. Yes, yes, it works. That's a very interesting one. So I can give here border radius 20 and I can do a color black here. I can do it even more, 50. 50, come on. Yes, it works. And it's much easier than the, the previous, the one that I did previously. So I'm gonna remove the previous one. Should I combine it with our actual island? Let me try. Not sure how it will work, but I think it should work because it will, it doesn't have anything to do with, I just will do it black. Um, background color black. Entering. Kinda doesn't work. Uh, top. Animated island style, position top left border, but it doesn't have width and height. Where does the width and height 
come from. Yes, I think I think it will work. Yes. Oh, it's going to be complicated to to actually hit it, but I saw that it works. Yep, perfect. So that means that we can work with only one uh, actual view. All right, guys, what do you think about this project? Did you enjoy it? If you enjoyed it, please let me know down in the comments. I'm gonna publish all of this code for you to have a look and to be able to improve this because this is a starter and you can actually do a lot of things with this. Maybe you can build a ping pong game. Maybe you can add online features to a ping pong game where you can play with your friends. Um, challenge yourself, always try to Always try to learn more, always try to build something that you're not sure if you're gonna achieve it. Uh, the same way as today, uh, I tried to do something new that I have never done in React Native, which is a proper game based on physics. And now uh, I know that it's possible and I'm super happy that we, that we did that. Um, once again, stay tuned for the next week because we will announce something big, something big for the Node.js development community. And you don't want to miss that. I'm pretty sure uh, you will love what we will organize for you guys. But for now, uh, yeah, take care, stay hydrated, write clean code. If you enjoy our tutorials, subscribe to the channel because this are, is helping us a lot to reach more developers and to um, to help even more people. With that being said, thank you very much for staying with me till the end in this Friday evening, and I wish you a very uh, nice weekend ahead. Bye-bye, guys.